Let's bring in David Nixon, who you can watch tonight, 7 Eastern on After Further Review. What's up, David? Hey, what's going on, fellas? We are breaking down Utah State, uh, and we'll get to that in a moment. But uh, let's start with our question of the day, which has a stat of the day with it, so hang on. How much of the BYU offensive struggles can be attributed to the fifth-ranked strength of schedule? Well, let's go to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU is one of six FBS teams that have played four Power 5 opponents right now. No names like Ohio State, Notre Dame, Purdue, Texas, USC, and BYU. They're the only team. So do you, how much do you think that's contributed to the low numbers on offense? No question. I mean, you look at Wisconsin. You look at Washington. That's arguably one of the best defenses in college football. Number one in scoring defense. Exactly. I, I, I think you can – I mean, yeah, I mean, East State, BYU struggle. But keep in mind, yardage-wise – BYU had some short fields because of those turnovers, right? So they didn't have chances to go 80, 90 yards and put up the stats that a lot of people would like to see. Granted, we saw them in the second half kind of fizzle out, and that was a little discouraging. Um, but back to Jason's point earlier, they put up 24 points in a quarter. So, um, yeah, I think obviously it, it's, it directly correlates. But at the same time, I haven't hit the panic button yet. Uh, if you go out and you start struggling against Utah State and others, then yeah, I think you start seeing traces of 2017. But I think the strength of schedule, like you mentioned, top five, uh, it's directly correlated with how his offense has, has struggled. And, you know, and it, when we say struggle, keep in mind, most of the games they played error assignment free as far as no turnovers. Uh, they played pretty clean games. Tanner Megan has been a great game manager, um, but they struggled obviously against Washington to get anything going. And, and that's understandable. I mean, Everyone struggles. Utah struggles, right? I mean, you look at everyone that, that Washington has played, even Auburn, who's a top 10 team, struggled to put up points. And so, um, you know, time will tell with this offense. This is still the first year under Grimes. So I think everyone's still trying to figure it out. We saw a fun wrinkle against Washington. We saw a little shovel pass slash little inside screen to Lopini Katoa. They went back to a couple times. They had great success. And so it was awesome on third and 20 plus. <laughs> <laughs> they really were. That's the situation you want to be in right there. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think Grimes continues to evolve and this, this whole entire offense will continue, continue to evolve as well. And they'll continue to find playmakers and put them in situations to succeed. Okay. One offense that's not struggling is the Utah state offense. Now, again, competition you, you you don't know i think we all agree though you're putting up that many points you're a pretty good offense so do you believe utah state is for real you know so on sunday nights i go break down a byu game in the utah game uh and then occasionally we've broken down some utah state film and they are the real deal um, you, you look at Jordan Love, he's already thrown for 1,070 yards this season. Um, you look at uh, Ronquavian Ron Tarver. Ronquavian Tarver. Averaging 10 yards per catch. And, of course, you got Gerald Bright at running back, averaging 7 yards per carry. And so they've got playmakers on their side, and they're very uh, crafty with their offense. Um, and I, I love how they, they go about managing the game as well. And so, yeah, they are for real. Now, have they played this type of competition BYU has? No, right? I mean, In New Mexico State. Game, yes. Michigan State, yes. They probably should have won that. The Aggies. They had their opportunities for yeah. sure. Uh, and it's kind of Utah State's interesting because every year they start off really hot yes. in these opener these openers. They've they, had five of these: Oklahoma, Auburn. And they, they're Michigan very State, competitive yeah, first so game, and they kind of fizzled. But uh, <laughs> but this is one year that I mean, if I'm a BYU fan, I'm a little worried. Um, and when I say worried, I, I'm more of this matchup is very intriguing. Listen, you, you go back to last year, and th I think the matchup I want to watch is this Utah State defense, can they handle BYU's rushing game? Can, P can BYU get on the back of Squally Cannon, Lopini Katoa, and run them? Because the, the deal with Utah State, they're 100th in the country in rush defense. They're um, allowing, I think it's around 100 and 186. 186, yeah, 186 yards, 186 yards per game. So, And that's against Tennessee Tech and New Mexico State in there. Yeah. Uh, but it – it is with Air Force. That's right. Maybe so that's Air Force skews the numbers. Yeah. Uh, but you look at last year when BYU played up there, they rushed for 210 yards in that game. So I expect BYU to go back to the fly sweeps, jet sweeps, try to attack the edges because Utah State does not have the athletes that Washington has um, and, and try to exploit them there. And then once again, that starts to open up the passing game. I still would love to see – I think everyone would love to see Tanner air it out a little more, take a few more shots. The problem is – Is that going to happen, though? The problem is it's the same thing as last year. If you take a shot on first or second down, then you're already behind the chains if you don't complete it. And this offense just hasn't shown that they can pick up big, you know, big chunks of yards, although we did third and 20-plus against Washington. Was, we were right. successful. It was all underneath stuff that led to a running catch, which you'll take. But I want to down the field That's throw right. in the air of 20-plus caught. And you kind of have to because, once again, then this defense has to respect you vertically. Uh, then you can't stack the box because the second that you start stretching them, the safeties have to respect that. Now they're playing 15 yards deep rather than 12 or 10 yards deep uh, where they can come up in the box and, and make a tackle. So um, 
Grimes is obviously looking at this. He's a bright guy. His whole staff, they're from, they, they know the issues at hand. So I'm confident that they'll address those. And hopefully this game you'll see Tanner Aaron out a little more. Uh, losing Moroni Hurts, uh, that's a huge weapon that, uh, you know, a big target that, that he's been uh, the main guy, go-to guy so far. Receiver. That's right. And so that one hurts. But you've got Bushman and uh, other guys that can step up. Still love to see Micah Simon get some speed out there, get him involved. Um, let Ahifa keep doing what you're doing already. Uh, but uh, this offense definitely needs to continue to evolve. And, Hopefully this is a week because Utah State, I, you can't lose to Utah State. I'm telling you. Last year, seven turnovers. That was I, bad. It was bad. And you can't follow it up with another one at home. And, and it goes back to being at home as well. BYU just has not done well at home this season. And going back to last season as well, they struggled to defending Lavelle's house. And so uh, they've got to get on track. And this is one of those games, Friday night, ESPN. I mean, the, the nation will be watching. And you've got to go out there and make a statement. We're talking to David Nixon, who you can watch tonight on after further review at 7 Eastern time. The question becomes this. I, I think the matchup of uh, BYU's defense and Utah State's offense is important because I don't know if BYU can win a shootout in this game. If Utah State gets going, that's trouble for the Cougars. Yeah, and you look at the stats, BYU struggles in sacks. We're 127th in the country in sacks. Fourth worst. Yeah, <laughs> fourth worst, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, and also for tackles for loss, we're 127th. So this, t- this BYU defense, and, and you look at the film, against Washington, we continue to only rush four. And, and it seemed like BYU is just dropping back that's right. That, I, I think it trying to get. I back think a lot of it was because I think Elias Tuiaku is worried that we get burned deep. I mean, you look at his defense. We're not getting a lot of bombs thrown over our defense. There's not a lot of touchdowns, positive. which is great. But the flip side is that you're not you're not creating a lot of turnovers per se, uh, and you're also not creating a lot of pressure, which once again can create those turnovers. So, uh, I would love to see Tuiaku put more pressure, get get, get more um, just just more. Interesting blitzes going on. I mean, more safety blitzes, corner blitzes. Brian Logan and I were talking about this, how back in our day, we'd bring corner safety blitzes with some linebacker blitzes. I mean, we were kind of coming from all over the field and just haven't seen that creativity so far this year. And a lot of that might be due to the fact that, you know, just a little worried that, uh, you know, you get exposed if you do. So um, I, I agree that that is the test. Can this BYU defense, especially the secondary, uh, we'll see what happens with Diane if he can come back this week or, you know, what his and status is. Zane, there's discussion that Zane. That's right. Back, so yeah. I think if BYU can get those playmakers back, they were sorely missed against Washington, as we saw, and as we'll break down uh, this evening on the AFR. But I think he's a couple of those guys back. Uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup for sure because Jordan Love, like I said, he is the real deal. I thought he was just a runner. He's turned into this amazing passer, so it should be fun. We uh, look forward to the breakdown tonight, and then uh, we'll see you Friday on Countdown to Kickoff as well. So yeah, thanks, sounds David. good. Fun week. Hi, guys. Yeah. David Nixon.